As someone who primarily focuses on Doom and other retro games, you'd be hard pressed finding me talking about a game as new as Fallout 4. Despite being about five years old, there is a dedicated fan base for this game that is also probably one of the most diverse groups of gamers today. Admittedly, I'm not an expert on Fallout, but I think this allows me to provide a fresh perspective as someone who barely has played the Fallout franchise in the past. So let's get right into it. I am regrettably late to this party in 2020 with games like the upcoming Doom Eternal and Cyberpunk 2077. Why am I playing Fallout 4? Well, there are a few reasons. The first we'll start with is the story. While originally critically panned by many players, it is enjoyable despite the linear nature that you are confined to, for the main quests at least, which is disappointing because Bethesda is known for their deep narratives. This may sound like I hate the game, but this could be further from the truth. The gameplay is first in class for the series, and the story is not awful by a stretch. In short, you are the lone survivor of Vault 111 after being cryo-frozen for 200 plus years. From there, you become many things. You are a man or woman out of time tasked with rescuing your child. Or you are a detective investigating crimes in a small baseball field city. An initiate of the Brotherhood of Steel. A tourist for the railroad. Or a cage fighter. While the main story is exceedingly linear, how you get there is entirely up to you. You have the choice of following the main story, or to follow any of the subplots that can lead to hours of game time and much replayability with the many diverging paths. Four total DLCs expand this function and story giving the, the Lone Wanderer more to do when there is an institute sized crater in the ground. The gunplay was developed by id Software after being acquired by Bethesda. The weapons feel like they have weight, the snappiness and sounds all add to much more in-depth gun handling experience. It plays much more like an FPS than a Bethesda RPG with much more traditional controls like games such as Call of Duty or other modern first-person shooters. This isn't a bad thing. With the right loadout, you could switch from enemy to enemy in a rapid fashion. From the return of series staples like Death Claws and Raiders and Ghouls to new fan favorites like Mirelinks, Fallout 4 has no stop in different and unique looking enemies. A little side note here from future Eric. This could be incorrect. I believe Mirelinks were in Fallout 3 and New Vegas, but I digress. They do expand upon the roster a little bit. Even without mods, the cast is diverse and interesting. From an agent hardened Sith detective to a sleuthy, not sleuthy, reporter. To a hardened mech knight and even, yes, a robot butler that will help you, that will call you dirty words. One of my favorite functions is the stat system. It's based on an old RPG system called GURPS. You choose your first stats to be from strength, perception, endurance, charisma, intelligent, agility, and luck. These can easily be translated to more traditional D&D stats. This does come with the easily understandable acronym SPECIAL. From there, your level in the stats dictates what other perks you can choose later down the line. This simplifies the system from most other RPGs and is a good entry point for newcomers to the series. However, absent from the game are fan favorite traits from the original Fallout 3 and New Vegas games. But these can be added with mods. Also, Missy is how you level up perks. You use your level up points to add to the perk chart. Controversially, I like this system over New Vegas because of how easy it is to understand. One of my frustrations with the community is the need to overcomplicate things. But once you become accustomed to this system, you do crave some more complexity, admittedly. At this point, I do recommend switching over to New Vegas or Fallout 3. Just note, the game does not play entirely the same as 4. But this isn't a video comparison about New Vegas to Fallout 4, and I'm not at liberty to make such a comparison. These are, as admittedly, my opinion. But this is where the game really shines, is its modularity in terms of its modding potential. 
What I mean is, is that you're not bound by an individual mod. And this is true for most of the other games in the series as well, but I play Fallout 4. You have everything from quest mods to weapon mods, NPC mods, settlement mods. The list goes on. This leads to a completely unique experience depending on your preferences for what you want to see. Do you want a survivor horror feel? A modern warfare? Or do you want to conquer the wasteland? The choice is really yours when it comes to modding. And unlike games like Half-Life, where you're just bound to a certain gameplay perspective, you can add or subtract to things. However, this does get a little different. The modding potential of the game creates an exceptional and addictive experience if you can get it to work. But should you exceed in getting your load order working, you are rewarded with expanded cities, 4x wartime strategies, and even more tales from around the commonwealth. Want more modern style weapons? Sure. Want better 50 caliber weapons? Go for it. The sky is the limit and there's virtually nothing modders won't do in this game. Like Half-Life, Quake, or Doom before it. While Fallout is a competent playing game, it is not competently made. While worrying about death claws, Mirelurks, or Raiders will be lose will pose to be the game's biggest risk, much more worrying are enemies like crash to desktops and bugs, graphical glitches, and poorly patched AI plague the wasteland. Once again though, these can be patched with mods, but a AAA developer should be able to iron these out before a major release, even with a game five years old. I can't tell you the countless hours I have spent working on my load order to get random crashes, mixing textures, or even invisible weapons and enemies to be fixed. I sadly do not have footage of these atrocities. Personally, I rather like this approach though. Make a passable game, make it run right, but then use it as a platform for modders. This is the only game I know of that offers user-made mods in a first party capacity. What I mean is, is that you can boot up Fallout 4 and download mods right into the game. Hell, this is the only game I know of that has a special paid for store with mods aside from Skyrim, which is another Bethesda title. Why I worry is because at this time, at the time of launch, this game was $60. That's six zero. I think a much more intuitive and customer friendly strategy would be to maybe open up the source code and charge cheaper for the game. What I really am trying to get at here is that to market the game as a modding platform. So have a competently made game with fewer bugs, but use this as an experience to teach early game developers how to develop games and just encourage people to mod said game. I think it's time we stop pretending that Bethesda makes good RPGs. I mean, they're passable and they're good, but let's be honest, how many here who are playing the game play the vanilla base unless you're speedrunning or you're just too lazy to want to get the mods to work? Almost every video I see of this game is modded to some degree, whether it's to make the game run better or to add some of the aforementioned things I said before. Additionally, the game can come off anemic in content at times. I did mention there is a lot to do. There is. There really is. But you can blow through it quickly, only making way for more mods. Unlike its cousin Skyrim, where the base game can have you literally wandering for hours doing odd jobs and quests for no reason whatsoever. While it's what is really the most heartbreaking is that I was only able to beat the main storyline. Still wanting more, I ventured off to Far Harbor, where my journey ended sadly. I was left with some fatal crashes on my game and could not recover. I ended up starting over a few times, but wanted to get this video on my channel eventually. In conclusion, this is a great game. I love it. I want to play more of it, if the game allowed me. The constant bugs are a lingering frustration and I feel I could get 
my and if I feel I could get my mods to poss work possibly in all of the DLC and not have to worry about a caustic crash to desktop scenarios, this would probably be one of my most favorite games of all time. Even up there with Doom. I like how easy it is to jump into a game and with mods like Sim Settlements, Start Me Up, and other expansion mods, how easy it is to even get the game off the ground. I could just indefinitely play the game and build up an empire on empire. I do think right now this is a must have game, but no, it takes some TLC to get off the ground. This is Eric, and I punch demons. I'll see you in the wasteland.